Hey friends, AI, wow, it's still permeating our world. Whatever you think of it, whether you imagine that it's conscious or it's just a set of numbers, the thing is that it's more and more permeating people's lives. This is the second in a series where I'm trying to address some of the concerns that AI might have for those of us who love the outdoors, who are more concerned with mindfulness and being generally aware in life. We do have a challenge before us. Even if you're trying to avoid AI, this is now becoming a part of almost everything online. So if you're using Google, if you're watching YouTube, which I assume you are right now, all of these are starting to integrate AI in one way or another. But today I wanna to share with you how far it's advanced since I spoke about it last time and how much more easily available it is to people and what this does because this does nothing less than start to well honestly have us question what is truth I mean, that's a big word truth but we know for a long time that it's been possible to manipulate whether it's photographs or videos in order to make something appear to be there that isn't or wasn't ever there. Here's the thing though, in the past, you had to be pretty skilled at either old time photo manipulation, then Photoshop. You had to have a pretty strong skill set in order to make convincing falsehoods using a picture or a video. And what that means is that for a lot of us, a video or a photograph is considered proof. Well, if we're thinking about the Sasquatch, we go online, we watch videos, or we look at photos, and we say, all right, here's some actual evidence. And then we will examine those photographs, we'll examine those videos very carefully, and try to determine whether they are real or not. And there's something more subtle that happens here. Because also, as we're intaking media, our minds become permeated. So if we're seeing lots and lots and lots of videos of Sasquatch, whether they are true or not, they are going to start to validate the belief that we currently hold regarding Sasquatch. Of course, this could be for anything else in the world. What AI is doing is it's lowering the bar in a huge way in making easy photo and video manipulation accessible to anyone. Now, I'm not skilled in this stuff, but I'm gonna give you a few examples here. And some of these are more convincing than others, but note that with all of these, I literally could do this for free online just by typing in a few words. I did not have to have any skills beyond being able to type something in. This one's not super convincing, but remember, this is just typing in a few words. Here's Liliana in a beautiful setting of ferns. Whoa, something is watching her. That's a little creepy. But luckily, she has a friend with her. Yeah, nice German Shepherd. She's pretty friendly with that dog, isn't she? This is more convincing. You might have seen the video I did on these wasps that capture spiders and paralyze them and put them into these containers. Here I had the AI art program just create some other beings inside of that container. Are these spiders or what? It recognizes the surroundings in the picture and it makes something that is appropriate and fits it in to the whole feeling of the picture. This is a shot taken out of some footage when we were in Hawaii. Beautiful dolphin and a snorkeler. But boy, I could tell a different story about something else that we saw in the water that day. Right here, this was just a picture of the shore that I took up north in Wisconsin, but I've added with the AI a crypto beast, really odd creature, whoa. This is a rock we found up at Lake Superior. Really bizarro, some kind of strange fossil or something. Now, is this entire picture AI? Or is part of it AI, or is it actually real? It's not just in the art realm. Chat GPT is transforming the way that we search for information and explore information. And it can have just as much of a bias and a uh, tendency 
to lead us away from truth as the AI art can. Note that this is leveled up and that now you can just talk to GPT and it will talk to you back. It's becoming more and more person-like, which means that we're going to interact with it differently. Think about that for a moment. When we're just using text, we interact with something differently than when we're talking with it. When we talk with something, it starts to feel more alive. And as something starts to feel more alive, we give it a different sort of weight as far as how we filter that information. Some people are just having fun with it. GPT, I have a lemon, a balloon, and an egg. What can I do with that that would create a fun art project? With an egg, a lemon, and two balloons, you can create a simple and fun science-inspired art project, a lemon volcano. And then it went on to give me very, very clear instructions on how this art project was to be made. But what happens if I ask it who I should vote for? What happens if I ask it if there are Sasquatch in the woods? I'm going to get answers that have been filtered already through human biases since this thing was created by humans. Now, it's important to realize that when we are writing or talking with these language models, that the words we use and the approach we use and what we ask it to be can vastly transform the way it's going to react to us. And so, again, we're not just getting raw, pure information. Our biases also, in the way that we speak, are playing into that dynamic and creating different answers. And this is just the beginning, because especially as the video manipulation becomes easier and easier, and that bar starts to get lowered more and more, it becomes really easy to just add a little something into a YouTube video. Of course, it's also possible to do what we call deep fakes, so that we have a current or former president, or we have a celebrity saying something that they may never have said. So how do we distinguish truth from fiction? Not that this is a brand new problem. Ever since stories were told around a campfire, and then especially as we had the media of newspapers and magazines and books start to come into the world, people became invested and people became skilled at using those stories, that media, in order to change our minds to align to be more like theirs. This is the essence of one form of storytelling, which is really, in a way, what all of this is. Is storytelling, and storytelling can be used like any other item in the world. For good, for enrichment, it also can be used to deceive or to attempt to get others to follow us, to be more like us, to think like us. Now, YouTube is instating some policies, but as far as I know right now, these policies are mostly going to be self-reporting. So if we're creating a video and it has manipulations like I've put into this video, we're supposed to report that. I believe this is just being coming to be a policy right now. And so I don't know all about it. But if it is a self-reporting thing, well, if I'm out to deceive, I'm probably not going to self-report. There also may be some AI tools that YouTube uses in order to try to detect AI. And we will hope that those are correctly detecting what they should be. But many of these tools are new and there are a lot of people working on AI right now to make it more and more effective, more and more realistic. Are the detection tools going to be able to keep up? This leaves us in a huge quandary. What do we believe? When we hear someone speak, are we hearing them speak? When we see something amazing, are we seeing something amazing or are we seeing somebody's AI creation? How are we supposed to navigate a world where we just don't know if something is true or not? To answer this question and shed some light on it, I think we have to look a little bit at, first of all, the past, and realize, yes, this has been going on for a long, long time. Again, newspapers were doing this way back when. 
and pamphlets before that. So we are presented with these stories. And we, ideally, get to be the weavers of the tales. So all of this information comes in, and we get to weave a story about the world. And we get to choose what that story is. Because here is probably the sad truth. As we enter further and further into this age, we will not be able to tell what is truth and what is fiction. In many ways, we're already there. If you go onto Google and you want to think that Sasquatches are real, you will find tons of evidence to show that they are real. If you want to go online and find that Sasquatches don't exist, you will find plenty of evidence to convince you that they don't exist. And notice this. This is super important, my friends. If I go in search of that, my mind hears the same message over and over. Sasquatches are not real. They're not real. They're not real. Look at this person that faked it. Look at this. Look at this. And pretty soon, I have convinced myself that they're not real. And often this happens unconsciously. So I've ceased to become the weaver of my own tale of life. Instead, I am accepting somebody else's tale. They have succeeded in using that media to make me follow their mind instead of following my own. So what we need is we need consciousness. We need to understand how our mind operates and we need to be able to be aware of what it's intaking and how what it's intaking is affecting our ideas, our perceptions, and our beliefs. I've experimented with this, being a mindfulness practitioner, where I will go online and I will intake just one side of a source of information, and then I can feel my mind start to believe it after a time. This is a pretty well-known phenomena. If a message is repeated enough times to my brain, my brain will start to take that as a truth. When we know that's happening, though, then we gain a power over it. We can start to become the weaver of our own tales once again. Now I can go, oh, I've been getting this stuff in my feed because the algorithm, of course, is going to be feeding us the same stuff, the stuff that supports our current beliefs. And I can look and I can go, wow, I'm starting to really settle on this idea that Sasquatches are not real. And then I can say, all right, let me go searching for evidence of the opposite. And I can try to feed my mind equal doses of both. And then I will be in control of what I weave in my mind. Not complete control, because even though I'm trying to take in equal doses, some people are just going to be more convincing than others. People who are popular, who are charismatic, will have more power over me than a quiet voice, a you know, YouTube video that has three views and one subscriber. It's not necessarily that the person that has a million, million subscribers is the person telling the truth. It's that they are delivering their message in such a way that makes it very digestible to the brain so that people want to believe that. So that's the second part of this. As I intake stuff, if it's delivered by somebody who is charismatic, who is very eloquent, who is, has tons and tons of followers, that I probably need to weigh that a little bit less than I would other media. And this is tricksy. You can see, wow, again, we're getting into super complicated territory here because I don't know who to listen to or what to intake. But the best we can do is probably to try to intake various perspectives on anything that we are wondering about, or especially anything that our mind is locked down about. You know it, we all have it, right? We believe this and this about UFOs, about Trump, about Biden, about whatever it is. We have these beliefs, and very seldom do we question or notice that, oh, those beliefs have been sculpted by media and sculpted by what I've watched. And it's kind of infiltrated my mind until it's become my reality. So what's the answer? Yes, we can take in different sources of information and at least do a better job than if we only saturate our mind with one 
source of information or one slant to any issue. But if that doesn't even give us the truth, then what do we do? How do we know if something we see is real or not? And that's where ultimately we might find that for a very long time in human history, maybe as long as humans have been around, it's been very difficult to distinguish. It's only going to become so much more difficult as AI makes it easier and easier for anybody to create easy fictions and convincing fictions. That doesn't mean we have to give up hope. In fact, it points to something really important about this search for trying to find the truth when we look out at the world around us. But ultimately, if we stick with this search with enough ah, wisdom, with enough discipline, with enough discrimination of view, then we will start to see that the search for truth leads us to learning about our inner self. The more we explore this, the more we come to know ourselves. And that, in the end, may be more important than knowing whether there's Sasquatch or not. Because the outside world, if we're honestly exploring it, if we're honestly open to new evidence, is always going to keep unfolding in different ways in front of us. And then, instead of trying to find the truth, just like in life we often are trying to find that goal, get to the end, we discover that, it sounds cliche, but that the journey is the important part, the adventure along the way. As we come to know ourselves, that adventure becomes more fun. And then we start to explore the world, and we can start to do it with a sense of wonder and curiosity. When our mind doesn't lock down on one version of somebody's idea of truth, then the world opens up and becomes this immense playground, this immense place to explore and adventure in. So as AI increases its potency, we don't have to give up hope about knowing what's true and what's not. Maybe we never really had much hope of ever really distinguishing between the two, but we do have hope of changing our inner attitude and of looking at life as a grand adventure. Whatever the future brings, my friends, that's our choice. Are we gonna look at it with fear and despair? Are we gonna go forward with a sense of curiosity, compassion, joy, exploration, and adventure? I, for one, am gonna choose the latter. Love to you all. Share your thoughts down in the comments. And of course, you know, tell us what you think of Sasquatch. All right, talk to you down there.